Hey everyone, welcome to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how to paint this Dark Angels Land Raider using primarily an airbrush and a combination of Minotaur and Games Workshop paints. So I began by priming the model gray using Minotaur's Steinal Res Gray. Because we're going with a shading of light browns, I decided that the darkest it should be on is a gray and gray is a great intermediate color for priming so i decided to go with this one so i just made sure that the entire model was covered in this dark gray as you can see it's almost the same color as the plastic itself so it's a great color and then i used the black Steinal res primer to do some pre-shading uh, you'll notice that i had a little bit bad of a spray pattern so i switched airbrushes after this i started with my badger Patriot 105 and then uh, I just switched to my chrome for a little bit and gave it a really thorough cleaning which fixed mostly most of the problem but still the pre-shading was okay you're allowed going a little bit more messy as long as you clean it up with the the base color and this pre-shading is great so it'll get in the recesses and you just go along the edges so that way there's already some nice shading after the base coat and you don't have to do that much afterwards as you can see, it's a little bit bad of a spray pattern, so I cleaned it up. And just make sure to go over the entire model. Airbrushes are amazing for saving a lot of time, especially with models like this one. So uh, I'm going to use an airbrush a lot throughout this tutorial because it's a larger model and this just tends to uh, not use any brush strokes and save a lot of time because then you just can go over a single coat with a lot of uh, ease and very little time. So I spent a few minutes pre-shading in the black. And when the pre-shade was done, I started with the Xandri dust. As you can see, I switched airbrushes just for the Xandri dust and to keep it uh, nice and clean, I used my chrome and I applied a really nice even coat of Xandri dust over the model. Now this is the darker of the, of the browns from the Citadel range and it goes over gray really nicely. You'll see here, but leaves that good shading that we just did really well and cleans it up quite nicely. Um, now after the browns, I'd actually recommend going from the browns to the greens. I kind of forgot about the greens, as you'll see, so I did things slightly out of order, which you'll notice, but uh, in the end, it still turned out pretty nicely. So as you can see, I'm just going over the entire coat, getting a nice even coat over it. And once again, this airbrush saved me a lot of time, rather than having to paint this by hand using a very large brush, and there's no available, uh, there's no brush marks as you can see. Feel free to leave a slightly uneven coat if you want to make it look more worn and uh, more realistic. I really do like this uh, chrome. It actually is a nice airbrush. I usually use my Patriot for larger surfaces, but this uh, chrome did really well and kept that pre-shade nicely. And for this land raider, I decided just to start with the base coat and uh, separate all the guns off it. I will be putting the guns on slowly but surely throughout the tutorial once I have um, them properly base coated and painted. It's just a little bit easier to paint the side guns off the model as well as the top guns off the model. And that way you can also get the nice shading in the areas in which the, model, the guns will go in eventually. After a little bit of time, as you can see, it has a nice Xandri Dust base coat. And after the Xandri Dust was done, I switched up to a lighter brown. And basically I decided to go over and highlight the, the base coat with Ushapti Bone, which I'll be doing in just a moment. 
as you see, airbrushes really do save you a lot of time, especially with larger models like this one. Now I'm going to Jabti Bone, and I'm going to just, uh, once again, highlight the areas, so focus more on the middle parts away from the recesses, and just give it a, uh, a lighter appearance. And as always, this airbrush saves you a lot of time, and make sure to thin down your paints properly, because the Citadel obviously is a much thicker paint, so you have to use a paint, I recommend paint thinner if you don't have, if you don't have paint thinner water, but I highly recommend paint thinner, especially if you're using metallic paints. And I'm just going to use the Ushapti Bone to highlight these areas. As you can see, it just gives a nice uh, lighter appearance, which is perfectly uh, matching the Deathwing Terminator look. And that's why I want to paint this one up. It's for my Deathwing Terminators, so I figured I might as well match them. The other alternate color scheme would be then to do is just a solid green that would match the, the standard Dark Angel Marine color. But I will be going over the, the, the greens later, as I mentioned. I should probably do them after this color, but uh, I kind of forgot where the greens were going to go. So I started painting the metallics, and then I went to the greens afterwards. I just had to keep it really clean and make sure not to make any big mistakes with the, uh, the green afterwards. Here I am just painting the guns, focusing on the top parts of the of the guns and leaving the bottoms the darker Xandri dust. And after the Shapti bone, I made sure to give the uh, the entire model a satin varnish which will protect this coat that we've been working hard to create and also will create a really nice surface for adding a shading into the recesses plus if you make a mistake then you can go over and clean it up after using a cleaning step but here we go so now i'm going to add sarah from sepia i really like sepia because it's an intermediate it's not as dark as the Agrax Earth Shade, and it works really well with Deathwing colors, so I decided to add that to all the recesses of the model, just to add a little more definition, give it that sepia tinge. As I mentioned before, giving it a nice satin varnish beforehand creates a great surface for this varnish, as well as if you make a mistake, you, feel you can wipe it off quite easily with a finger or a rag or a dry brush. And here I go, just adding all the recesses, just to give it that, uh, just to basically give it a tinge of seraphim sepia, and that's uh, that's what we're going for. When doing this step, uh, you just use a thin synthetic brush. If you want a darker uh, recess, I recommend going with Agrax Earthshade. But I just really like the sepia look when combined with the Shapti Bone. This step took a little bit of time because I just took my time and made sure it was a very precision, uh, very precise putting into the recesses. Be careful. You don't want to spill Sarah from sepia everywhere. That's basically it for the bone color of the tank, which is the predominant color. Now I went straight to the metallics, as I mentioned, but I should have gone to the greens. Um, and what I did was, I used my airbrush once again to save myself a little bit of time on the tracks. And when using an airbrush and metallics, I basically used a one-to-one -one mix of lead belcher and a glaze medium, and then thinned it down using an airbrush thinner to get it to the right consistency before spraying with my airbrush. If you don't use a glaze medium, your paint will tend to come out very flat unless you use a paint such as uh, the one by Badger or the one by Vallejo, which is specifically designed for airbrush, like Vallejo Air. And then the rest of the model, I just painted La Belcher onto the guns and all the metallic areas, such as the chimneys. This step didn't take very long because there weren't actually that many metallic areas in the model, and I tend to use a very big brush because they were very large surfaces, and this saved me a little bit of time. 
and also painted the panels on the doors with lead belcher. It should probably be noted that I did thin down the lead belcher using an airbrush thinner once again. I like to thin down my paints slightly, especially when doing base coats. You don't want to uh, ruin any details. You just want to get the color and give a great solid foundation for the rest of the colors without obscuring any details. And now the gun is painted as well. And of course, after you paint the base color, you got to give it a shading or a washing. And I use Nalan Oil. If you want a slightly dirtier, more worn out appearance, I recommend a 1 1 mix of Agrax Earth Shade and Nalan Oil. I just want to keep it a little more pristine. I'm going to muck it up later with an airbrush as well, give it some uh, dirt and mud. So I'll just go Nalan Oil for this case. And I just use a very large brush to cover the model. And just get on all those tracks and on the guns, give it some definition, get in the crevices. All is good. Then of course, after the shading, we're gonna give some highlights. But here I go, get, adding non oil to the guns, give them some definition, which is great. And now the chimneys. I made sure to cover all the metallic areas with non oil shade. I didn't have water it down, I just wanted the strong black shading to it. I mean, there's some good contrast between the guns, and it'll really stand on this model. The uh, What I'm going to try to do is the metallics and the greens will be a good contrast to the light brown bone tones of the, uh, the Land Raider. And when it was done and dry, I get a very quick, large dry brush of Iron Breaker to all these areas. That way it'll give it that nice dusted appearance, what we're going for. It's great on the tracks, especially that have a lot of recesses and raised parts, as well as the guns. You get a nice dusted appearance, and it makes them really stand out, and all those edges will really pop, especially when hit by a, a large source of light. Plus, it'll give it a lot more realistic of an appearance. I'm, slight, I'm going for a slightly worn down tank, but uh, you still want some shine to the metallic areas. And here I'm dry brushing the gun with just a large brush because large surfaces, you can use a large brush. Now I focus on the golds. I decided to go with a liquid gold, and I chose old gold. It's actually one of my favorite of the liquid gold series from Vallejo. It's an alcohol-based gold, and it just gives a really nice shine with a single application to these areas. And I said to focus on all the symbols, make them gold. The other option would be a red. I just wanted to make them a little bit more shiny and uh, make them really stand out, so I gave them the nice old gold. I did that with all the skulls all over the tank. There's a bunch of skulls all over the tank, as well as on the guns. Applying old gold, make sure to properly thin it down with an alcohol and don't get too much on your brush because it tends to clump up really easily. And luckily, it tends to dry really quickly. So now that the golds are done, I, uh, I reshaded the areas black, just in a couple areas, just to give it a little more definition. And then applied a Caliban green base coat to the areas that are supposed to be green. As I mentioned earlier, I should have done the green before the golds and the, and the silvers, but it's okay. We can easily go back and fix that with very little, uh, very little problems. So then I applied the Caliban green to the areas. I made sure to tape off the straight lines ahead of time and make sure that it does the green and get on anything I didn't want it to. As you can see, I'm going for the, uh, the the green stripe along the side of the tank, which I think is it's just my favorite look out of all the the options that I see in the books. And I made sure to cover the searchlights and the tops of the guns as well with the Caliban green. And 
when that was dried, I gave a 2 to 1 mix of Caliban Green and Warpstone Glow to highlight these areas and just give some really good um, variation in color to them, make them stand out a little bit more, and as well as just gives them a worn out appearance near the edges. And then afterwards, I hit, re hit these areas once again with a satin varnish to protect the green colors that we, uh, we work so hard to get on. You want to protect your vehicle throughout as much as possible when painting this model. You want to keep protecting it with satin varnishes, which create save points, and just protect the, the colors. So I remove the tape, and as you can see, we have the great lines there. And now it's time to focus on the reds in the model, since the, the tertiary color of the Deathwing would be red. So I painted all the wiring on the guns, as well as the uh, the assault cannon red. And so I watered down Mephiston, I diluted a little bit with thinner, just to give a really good coat. Now, the Mephiston red tends to go really well over metallics, so what I essentially just did was cut in the metallics. I really like to do that first by painting the metallics to make sure they're nice, and then cutting them in with the Mephiston red. As you can see, it's just a thin down Mephiston red, and I'm gonna make sure to just paint all the areas I want to rerun on the gun. And when the red was uh, was all dry, I of course have to bring some definition and add some shading to these areas. And you of course match red with red. So I decided to hit him with a Karaberg Crimson shading, which did not take very long at all since there weren't that many red areas. You just take a thin brush and apply the shading to the areas. If you're unhappy with shading after a single coat, feel free to apply another coat of shading. But uh, it tends to dry pretty dark and almost a black appearance. And just make sure not to cover any of the silver areas. You want to keep it pretty clean. But as you can see, it really brings out the nice details and the ribbing in the wiring. And then I applied it to the assault can as well, which as you can see here, I also painted the around the barrels red as well. This is great because it adds another color and essentially another dimension to the color. Some nice contrast, there's the reds which are dark, the metallic silvers which are light, and the middle bone tones. And when it was dry, I highlighted these areas by just giving a quick overbrush with Evil Sun Scarlet and then blended the Evil Sun Scarlet onto the gun, keeping the edges uh, the dark shading. And then overbrush once again the wiring. And finally, I applied a Wild Rider Red, just to the areas in which my light source was hitting, just to make them a little brighter, and then I gave an edge highlight to the gun, just to, once again, add a third color, make it really stand out and pop. However, the Wild Rider Red is very bright, so just to tone down and blend these colors together, I get, this is an optional step if you want, but I applied a Blood Letter Glaze to these areas just to quickly blend them together and tie the colors back and bring the Wild Rider Red a little bit closer to the, the darker red spectrum. And now, here's a, just a quick tip for you. Before, if you're applying yellows over any other color, I always like to hit these surfaces with white scars over the lights, which are going to be yellow. I applied a quick water down white scars to them and that way it'll really make the yellows pop and save you a lot of difficulty because it's hard to go yellow over almost any other color. So then I hit the areas first with Avril and Sunset to give the nice darker yellow um, foundation and then I'm going to focus more central with each following step. So I painted all of the light parts Avril and Sunset to begin with. And then I focus more towards the central areas with Uriel Yellow, and then just the central square I'm going to do with the next highlight. Just gives some foundation. As with lights, obviously the more central the light, the brighter it will be, and therefore it should be lighter. And then finally with Flash gets yellow, just the central part. And save me a little time, but as you can see now, they're really yellow after a single step because of the white scars save me a little bit of time. And then I did the same thing with Lothar and Blue, applied them to the lenses of the other parts, lights, 
and just give him a little shiny of an appearance. I get put a white dot in each corner with white scars. And now it's time to make it look dirtier, because my tank was looking way too pristine. So I took my airbrush again, and it was in spraying amazingly, and I, I took that to my advantage before I cleaned it. And I just made sure that, because uh, I really don't want a clean appearance with my spraying, I'm actually glad it, it's focus, it's spraying a little bit grossly. And I'm gonna use that to produce a really nice, realistic mud effect with Muddy Brown from the Minotaur range. It's already great for, for airbrushing, and I'm using it and apply it all around the tire tracks and the bottoms just to give it a really more worn out, dirtier appearance, and that's what I'm going for. This tank should not be in perfectly pristine condition, and this uh, muddy brown will get on the tracks and it'll produce a really nice uh, muddy appearance. Once again, airbrushes save you a lot of time, and they produce really nice effects on large models such as this Land Raider. As you see, I'm just going around the, the entire the tracks, and also I, I'm going to turn upside down after. But now, just produce a little more variation in the color and to represent more dried up uh, mud. I took the color bark from the Minotaur range and did the same thing, but not I didn't cover all the areas, just a subset of them, uh, a little bit more towards the tracks. Just produce a little more variation in the browns. Now you can see there's a little bit different brown tones in there. Produces a great effect. Once again, with my handy dandy Badger uh, Patriot 105 airbrush. And then I'm going to do one more thing with my airbrush just to make it look a little more dirty appearance. I'm going to apply a dark gray to the smokestacks. And finally, I applied gray liner from Reaper. Use my airbrush just to the tops of the chimneys to give them that smoked appearance. And after this, the only thing I left to do is to put the model together, and here it is. And now you know how I painted up this Dark Angels Land Raider. I think it turned out pretty nicely, seeing as the amount of time I spent on it. I think it looked really good, and the airbrush saved me a lot of time, and it looked really good on the tabletop. As you can see on the side, it has that warm, worn out, dirty appearance. I really like the way the tracks look and uh, just overall tied together really nicely. I intentionally put my multi-gun closer so that it saves me for range and shooting when playing on the battlefield. But that's more of a tactic video. So thank you very much for watching this battle, this uh, painting tutorial, and leave comments in the comment section down below what vehicles you would like me to possibly do in the future. So thank you very much for subscribing to the Warp, checking out this video, and please like the video, and comment in the comment section down below. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.